Dr. Tom Palmer, thanks so much for joining us. Real pleasure. You know, a couple months ago I heard you give a speech uh, here in Washington, D.C. about Students for Liberty and why that, like we here we are at the International Students for Liberty Conference, why the international is so important and the kinds of things that Students for Liberty does overseas that are so just so important to the movement. Why is an international presence so important for spreading liberty and for the continuation of libertarianism and liberal ideas all over the world. Why, why is that so important? Well, there are a couple of reasons. One is people like to feel that they're not alone, that they're part of a movement of people who really care about them. And so I think it's very helpful for the American students to know that they have brothers and sisters, if you will, in this common fight for liberty in Nigeria and Ecuador and India and China and Europe and just all over the world. And it's also important for those students. Nigerian and Kenyan students are on Facebook. Uh, mobile telephony has spread all around the world, so people have cheap access to social media. And they're able to connect with young people in their same age cohort and spread ideas about liberty, how to promote liberty in your country, how to deal with the horrible corruption and shakedowns that people experience from their government. And then finally, Libertarianism is a truly international, global, cosmopolitan philosophy. We do not think that skin color or religion or language or nationality matter to your, your possessing fundamental human rights. This also has the potential, looking into the future, to make the world a more peaceful place. I was so happy that in India, when they had an Asia Students for Liberty meeting, there were Indians there, there were Bangladeshis, Nepalis, Bhutanese, Pakistanis, Indians, uh, Chinese, sometimes their governments, well, they've waged war with each other. And here we have voices, students and young people on both sides of these borders promoting a common philosophy, which is the philosophy of peace. Sure, sure. Do you think, you know, what we saw with, uh, with uh, the student uprisings in Iran recently with the Arab Spring, what we saw, you know, whether or not that's a net positive or net negative in the long run or neutral. Um, what we saw was social media being a catalyst for those kinds of things, or at least a way for communication to be achieved that has never been achieved between, um, between uprisings and, and factions of freedom fighters all over the world. What have you seen, you know, you've been doing this for a while, going, known as a world traveler generally, someone who spreads the ideas of freedom all over the world. What have you seen as far as the impact of social media on that very venture? Well, it allows people to go around the chokeholds that the state, and maybe in some other cases, other interests hold on communication. And that's, of course, the reason why a lot of authoritarian states are trying to control or ban Twitter, Facebook, and so on. Uh, put restrictions on the internet. There's talk in some countries of an intranet that would only be limited to that country. Uh, that's the reason. They don't want people being able to communicate directly with each other. One of the things that happened, and let's take uh, Egypt, for example, when Twitter came on the scene, people were able to communicate, although the state had control over radio, television, and newspapers that were state-owned and propagated the state line. So social media has allowed us to bypass that and exchange information with each other. But I don't want to put too heavy an emphasis on that. It is revolutionary. It is changing the world. But let's not forget the fact that people like to meet face-to-face, -face, that they make connections with each other that are more powerful than you can do uh, electronically. And that's why I think groups like this, the Students for Liberty conferences around the world, are really important because people make friendships that are going to last for 40, 50, 60 years. Uh, some of the kids who have met here, in 60 years, they'll be exchanging whatever is the equivalent of tweets in 60 years, who knows, uh, as friends. And that is a very powerful way to build networks. So the European Students for Liberty Conference is coming up in Berlin in March. We're hoping to get <clears throat> busloads of students from Poland, they're going to bring at least two busloads uh, of Polish students gathering at universities from Ukraine, Russia, Central Asia, Belarus, all over Western Europe. We're having the first Arab Student for Liberty meeting in Beirut, which will be in April. And that's uh, Lebanese students and inviting their friends and colleagues, students from Syria, from 
uh, Jordan, from Morocco and other countries, and also African Students for Liberty, which has been in English, but now the very first French-speaking African Students for Liberty, which is starting up, and that's going to be holding a meeting that I'll be at in the Côte d'Ivoire. So it's a very exciting time to be a friend of liberty. That's incredibly exciting. Thanks so much, Dr. Palmer. It's always a pleasure. Yeah.